Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, the sound check was successful. Uh, it's the exposure now. The, the sort of the uh, focus is kind of off uh, off track. There we go. Uh, that solved the focus problem. It was uh, going in and out. So, uh, anyways, it is 23 hours and four minutes into the f 23, 20, 23 hours and four minutes into the 30th day of uh, November, and now we're going to start our observation vlog with a new sound system. So, uh, anyways, uh, uh, let's get this camera turned around and get uh, everything focused and in line. All righty, so uh, we'll get this. Uh, we did the sound check. We did uh, the intro uh, facing the other way so you can see where I am. And now, uh, if we can't, uh, no, I can't get it. I know we'll have to correct this uh, later on in terms of getting my notes. We're going to get into the whole concept of social engineering. This is the humanist part that evolved after uh, uh, the sort of the uh, vassal state was set up. A humanist state was set, uh, set up. And I understand is that the elites are, again, they're not, it's not one thing. The, the, uh, the, you call the shadow government or whatever you want to call it, they aren't a single thing. They're not a single force uh, in terms of being understood in that manner. They are a variety of things <laughs> because they're not one thing. And what happens is, yes, they are all at the top, but, they, but they're at the same time, they're all battling each other. And this all has to be seen as you go into European history to see how these kingdoms were fighting with each other on an almost repeated basis. And it, it is, well, I don't trust, you know, this line comes up and says, well, I don't trust, you know, people who are, are pundits out there. You know, I, I, I want to understand this for myself. But the thing is, uh, he misses an enormous amount as a, an intellectual. Uh, that's what he is. You can you can observe people and look at their behaviors and then classify them according to the groups that they most accurately fit. And he is a modernist because he believes in order, but he is not a believer in God. He doesn't have a fundamental belief. He's more of an atheist than anything else. And so this places him in the humanist category Uh under Voltaire, <laughs> this is where he is. This, so he his his world existed up until 1945, and the slow end of his world began at, with the end of the atomic bomb because this is where science was dethroned. And, and the thing is, it's not that science was dethroned as a sense of of well, well, so we let's put it this way: we, people say, "Oh, we have lots of discovery. We have the cell phone. We have everything." Well, these weren't necessarily discoveries in the sense of what called the classical science that that, that um, Lionel's talking about. Lionel is talking about a world of science that was supposed to be uh, predicted. They were supposed to be able to predict everything. But 1945, that was the end of it. They, they, they couldn't predict what was going to happen in 1945 because it was so far beyond them. That, and the thing is, is this was the case. You, they always have the, you have the, these elites who always have these advisors, and it's basically the way it works. And this is kind of the same thing today: is you have your priestly class, your priestly class. These are because the kings themselves, even though they're ordained, they're kind of idiots. Uh, they're not really that smart, and so they always have these advisors uh, to understand this. Go into um, uh, go into uh, what you call it. Oh, uh, Aang, the last avatar on Nickelodeon. Take a look at the Earth Kingdom, Ba Sing Se. There's the king there. He's got his main chief advisor. Of course, this advisor, again, is ordained by God. He is a pre on the priestly class of things. And his, there is, his job is there to tell the king, uh, you know, uh, what his future is going to be, what the predictions are going to be, what the stars look like, how the stars align, what sacrifices to what gods need to be made at what one at what particular times, so that he can king, keep his kingdom in good order. So the king himself is actually a subject of the gods that he believes in. You know, th this is sort of the, what the belief is, really is the dictate of everything else. And so the so the priestly class will want to keep themselves in good in good favor 
with the crown. But there's also, because there is a lot of different, uh, um, how we say this, how should we say this, a lot of different beliefs out there. You have priests, this is the way you have now, you have religions competing with each other. Oh, don't worry about it. They're all the same, but they're not all the same. Go down to the details and see what each religion believes and be, begin to realize that they're different, that there's different there's different realities there. And this is why they talk about they talk about the multiverse or even diversity. They're talking about in the diversity in the sense of the of the multiverse. They're talking about the existence of other realities. So because you have other realities, you have also other truths. So there's not one truth, there's only a truth depending on the reality that you're in. And this is where we begin to have our observation vlog, but at the same time, this is also Gnosis vlog because we're talking about the observation of Gnosis within the world. And you can go back and find this, go back and study the history of, Ju of Judaism. You'll find it, it, it's an amazing history. But again, you don't look for the textbook. The textbook is not going to tell you what you need to know. The textbook really eliminates 90% of the information that is really interesting. They tell you the dates and places. But they don't really give you a sense of why a person believes what they believe. Because we're talking about belief here. We're talking about a religion. And up until 1800, until, until Voltaire really got into his own position, he's the one who created the reformers. These are what people you see today who call themselves progressives. Uh, and they're out there, you know, they will talk about engineering society. And this is what we're in today. We're, 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 in, we're in a social engineering experiment. This is what the Nazis did. Oh, you can't talk about the Nazis. Yes, you can, because the Nazis were a type, because there was more than one, a type of social engineering experiment. And once again, they had their gods. They had gods they had to go talk to, get information from. And, of course, there was a priestly class that instructed everyone on what to do, including the king. They, they became their, in this case it was Hitler, when he came around, but he had this. This is what the you go, go study the origin the origins of the SS, and, and you'll find the, all that information that you'll find everything lines up. Go study the history of mathematics. Go study the history of uh, of physics, and once again, you'll bump into all these Gnostic people. The Gnostic people are the ones who believe in pay, who believe in, in some form of God or multiple gods. So what happens? The whole concept of humanism is an outgrowth that was sort of really pushed aside. And it was a way for the, those who believe, and these are the, the people who are ordained to power, to get the riffraff, enough people out of the way. That was the way they did the so-called uh, the sweeping away of the masses so that the, the wealth of magic would be left to simply a, a select few. But what happens is that this has started becoming more problematic, and so they had the humanists who came in in terms of trying to solve these particular social ills, look at the sort of called the genetics of things in the, or in the environment. You're talking about the communists and the, and the psychiatrists. So what happens? You have Freud on one side, and you have uh, people like, uh, uh, I can't remember who, the, the, well, basically Frankenstein uh, on the right side looking at genetics. Uh, and so the, the ones who are eugenicists looking at genetics, they believed that everything was, uh, including your, uh, including your brain, uh, your, your thoughts, and everything. They're all centered to the brain. But this is even some of these very educated people. They're, they're professors. They're researchers. And they're talking about neurology. But they're, they're attaching thoughts to the neurology. But yes, there is thoughts there, but it's not necessarily the brain causes the thoughts. But this is what they think. This is what the term instinct talks about. People, oh, yeah, animals have instinct. Well, yes and no. One may argue that they do, but the thing is, what does, what does the term instinct actually mean? Well, it means to be robotic, because this is where it comes from. You look at the history where the word comes from. Who brings it forward? Again, it's these eugenicists, these people who believe in genetics. This is also partially Darwin as well, who said, well, okay, animals don't have a thought, so they must be robotic. They must be like a clock or, or a mechanism. And these things are sort of called rote behaviors. In other words, they're programmed in using neurology. Well, yes and no. And this is where you have Gene Goodall. Gene Goodall goes out and lives with the monkeys and sort of determines that there's a lot more there, that there is actually a society, there's a structure there, there is a lot of living there. 
And so this is where Gene Goodall, and this is what happens in the 70s, she discovers a, a group called the Bonobos. Uh, the Bonobos are very sexual. They're very, very uh, what we call promiscuous. And they say, well, you see, you see, this is the way these tribes live, these, 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 these uh, uh, chimpanzees live, which are, uh, they're a subgroup of the chimpanzees, the Bonobos. And they're all very sexual. But what happens, what they don't bring out, is they actually be, she began studying the society of the Bonobos. The Bonobos were almost extinct. And this is before man had come along and really done any damage to the forest. And what had happened is that they were so sexually active that they didn't, they didn't reproduce. This is what we're seeing today. What? You, have, you have a lot of, oh, you don't need to have babies, but what you have a lot of sexual reproduction. This is what you're seeing now in, this, in what we call this, this iteration of the sexual revolution that, that go out and do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. This is what's being taught in schools. You know, they're going to have uh, uh, classes in university for strippers and uh, for so on and so forth. Because around 1718, this is where a lot of these men who will, who will procure girls for these particular different entertainment entertainment uh, venues, uh, they will recruit girls uh, from 17 years old and up. And sometimes even earlier, but they, where did they go? They go to those who want to be famous. You start with the pictures, you start with modeling, then you start with acting, and you bring it always forward. And of course, one of these paths in is cheerleading. Cheerleading, which, I mean, look at the, look at the cheerleading. You have guys on, you have guys cheerleaders who are dressed dressed in full pants, but then you have girl cheerleaders, even twelve years old, wearing very thin uh, mesh body suits. The tops and bottoms are covered, but the way they jump up and down, you can sort of see what's going on underneath. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot to sort of to sort of go through the lines and sort of say, oh, okay, this is what's actually occurring. So let's adjust my uh, fix my. I have to lock my exposure. So, and so this again is a training. It's a create. It's a social engineering of society that is heavily sexual, and it's a lot like the bonobos. So why is the they might say oh we want to defeat the whites well you don't have to defeat the whites the white people are going to destroy themselves and it's because they're following the behavior of animals who are going extinct who are going extinct and the thing is is that Jane Goodall will get gets this prize for figuring out how animals behave particularly chimpanzees and argues that it's the size of the brain this is where the, the eugenicists come in and say well it's the size of the brain. This begins a whole look into neurology. But the thing is, my dad had fish. Years, this was years ago, he had fish. And every time he'd come in, but he would notice, and he'd watch it, that as soon as my dad came in, the fish knew that he was there. And every time my dad came in, he, 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 went, over to, he went over to the tank, put some food in, and the fish came up to be fed. But the thing is, the fish knew he was there. This is before he... This was, and it, this wasn't... At, specific times it wasn't he came in at 12 o'clock every day to feed the fish these were random times during the day so the, the fish, it wasn't a rote training it wasn't instinctual instinctual for the fish to come up and be fed it's as he approached the tank they began to recognize that someone's coming to feed me that was the, that was the trigger that was the point and they were able to see outside the tank and recognize the person coming in This goes far beyond root training. This is not simply instinct. And we see this. Animals have a capacity to learn. We see this with dogs. Dogs have a capacity to learn. What happens with dogs who are from the rescue shelter? Some of these dogs are very dangerous. Why? Because they were in abusive homes. The, the dogs who were in abusive homes or who, who were beaten on a regular basis are very vicious and very wild. And people, I know a person who did dog rescue. They did... Uh, animal rescue, and unless you understood animal behavior, that dog would be very wild around you, very dangerous. Don't, don't go near the dog. He's a little nervous around people, and you know, uh, he, he will snap, he will bite, and so on and so forth, because he's got this he's got this mistrust issue. <laughs> he's got these trust issues with other people. But if you understand human dog behavior, and this is all animal behavior looks like that, most animals, and you'll see this even if you're watching anyone, anyone who is on YouTube has got an, uh, an animal, they've got pets, 
and they're letting the dogs or whatever room around the house, they'll sniff everything. In order to understand what a person is or who a person is, they have to sniff. Again, and this is when I went, went, went to this, this dog, I understood, and this is all animals like this, they have to sniff. They always sniff to find out what's going on. So you stand there, you let them come to you. You don't go to them, you let them come to you. And once the rapport is established because they're sniffing, and of course most people don't like this because why? What, what do dogs do? They sniff the butt. So they go for your butt, they go you know, for the, the, the areas that are would call sensitive and private. This is where the dogs go for. It. And they sniff it. They, they find out who you are by how you smell. It doesn't matter if you're wearing perfume or whatever, and they figure out that's the smelliest part of the body. That's where I'm going to go find out who you are. And once that was done, there was no issue with the dog for me. But however, other people, when they see the dog approaching and starting to sniff, get scared. And as soon as they jump back and freeze up, the dog sees this, reacts to it, and starts in a defensive mode. Again, this is not instinct. This is not this is not rote. And again, this is dog behavior. But I see so many people talking about training dogs and you know the genetics of a dog when we breed the dog to do this. And then they never achieve it. They never achieve the the the, the social engineering via genetics never works. It never has worked. But yet we're going through this yet again. We're going through the genetic engineering of society uh, through social engineering. <clears throat> we're on the Nazi side of things, even though you have the communists who are the Antifa, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. They're being the destructors of, of the establishment. As this destructors of establishment, establishment comes in, you have the destruction of establishment, in comes the social engineering on the right, the genetic. You see, it's not behavior, it's genetics. You need to get rid of these people. That's what we're seeing now. We're seeing the stage being set to get rid of X number of people who do not fit within the social engineering mode. And it doesn't matter what evidence you bring to them, it, it, because these priests, these doctors, because the science is now a belief, it's now a religion, that's it, 1945, the atomic bomb, the whole concept of predicting the science has completely collapsed. It's no longer part of proper physics. However, if you want to keep your, you know, your Nobel Prize, you want to keep your stature and your, and your, and your, and your stamina in terms of who you are as a social position, then you're not, you're going to shut up and act according, as, as a vassal uh, because you want to keep what you've made. And this becomes this becomes an issue because now the social engineering is becoming very destructive, but anyone who can stop it is not going to stop it because they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to lose what's of interest to them. And this is why ADOS routinely gets screwed over. What are, what are all these immigrants coming in for? Why are they doing this? Well, I've got an article that I'm going to post to, a couple of articles I'm going to post to uh, Twitter. And it's, the, it's from RT, but it's what's going on in, in Martinique. This is uh, St. Martin, uh, um, but it's the French portion of St. Martin. What they've done is they've gone in with the COVID police. They, they didn't have COVID police there because they had problems. The COVID police uh, in St. Martin didn't want to get, get the vax. They didn't want to be vaccinated. So what happened? The French sent, it, sent, sent in their military. This is seen all throughout North Africa. All the people heading to France, all the people heading to Calais, to Italy, these are all colonies. These are all the subjects, the, the subjects of the French crown, of the Italian crown, who have never given up their colonies, acting as colonial masters. And what they're doing is they're carving up Africa into spheres of influence for the European understanding of things. It's the white world. As I said before, the white world didn't fundamentally exist like this. The white world was initially class. What happens, what puts the, these dark people, these people who aren't fundamentally white, and this is according to the genetics of, uh, well, you do your gene survey. You do, oh, who am I from? Oh, I, I have this, this, this Anglo-Saxon background. I have this Italian background. Well, why is it all this? Because the whole genetic system is geared towards Europe. As I said before, you have not only have an out of Africa, 
but you have an out, out of age as well. You know how many how many white skinned people there are in in the Asiatic sphere. I mean, there's the Japanese and there's the northern there's there's the uh, northern Chinese. There's the northern Asians are all white skinned. This is where you have these so called matter of fact they have an alabaster white skin. They're not like the whites uh, in Europe in, in, in what we call uh, what we'll call Europe proper or white Europe. They're not like the uh, uh, the uh, Europe, the Europeans, uh, in that aspect, they actually have a fundamentally different color skeletal structure, and there's also a difference in the skin and how the skin becomes white or is white. And so there are fundamental differences there, but it depends on how you observe things. Uh, and then again, this is something that's not easy; it's very complex, and you have to go through a lot of things. So what happens is the social engineering people are following their gods. Who are their gods? The gods of the scientists. These are the top scientists and doctors. And ironically enough, they put up uh, uh, at Nuremberg, after the Nuremberg trial, this is what's going on in Austria. Some of the people in Austria put up the, uh, uh, the doctors and scientists who were hung at the Nuremberg trial. And this is what they were. All the, the large chunk of the people who were executed at the Nuremberg trial were all top scientists and doctors. And where does this file come out of? Austria. A lot of your social engineering came out of Austria. I think why, is it, why isn't... Uh, uh, Freud included this because Freud had, by that time, had moved to England, and then uh, his nephew Edward Bernays brought everything to the United States, where it was prop where it was appropriately brought up. We got a train coming in. We'll see how this new sound system picks it up. It's going to be a while, but so anyways. Uh, there are gods and scientists are these, are, are these scientists. I said, you have these pictures now coming up on Twitter showing we've got people bring it, coming in and bring it back a U-Haul truck. People leaving on the other uh, on the other side of the street. But where I'm sitting is, is lower down, so it behaves like an, almost like an amphitheater. Okay. The sound, the horn, the longest horn uh, crossing the street was last, and it was it was the softest. We don't have that high of a ceiling. We have somewhat of a high ceiling today. So uh, some of the sound is muted because there's a, a break in the clouds, but there's also enough clouds to sort of mute everything out. Uh, so we had the left, we had the left or the west waveguide activated first. Then we heard the horn first here in terms of the loudness. And as it went on, it, it got softer and softer until we had the long horn uh, that was uh, crossing the street. That means that that's, is an eastbound train uh, And we'll see what happens if something else comes together, comes the other way. So rail traffic is moving. There's not, there's no def, no doubt about that. Rail traffic is moving. Uh, so what's happening is that we're living in an era of social engineering. And I said the social engineering uh, comes from the humanist side of things, and these are your Nazis and your communists. Uh, but what happens is, and I said now things are swinging from communist understanding to Nazi understanding. This is why you're seeing the stormtroopers. This is why you're seeing the troops coming in. This is why you're seeing the lockdowns. This is what the lockdowns are. The, this is totalitarianism coming in. This totalitarian, and this is the wrong word, totalitarianism. Uh, they use despots, but the thing is, again, despots <laughs> is a Gnostic reference because despot is basically the Greek word despota or master. And again, they view the thing as as a master a master slave relationship, and this all the religions that have done this, all your Gnostic religions that are what to, that I talk about that have a separation between uh, God and man via the vassal state, um, 
those those are all pagan Gnostics. They're not they're not on the Christian early Christian side of thing. The early Christianity and this why Christ was crucified. It was he was he was hang, he was saying that all men are equal. Then at the top of it all, he went and said not only that he said all men are equal. He says I'm saying this because I'm God. He referred to himself as God, and that's when they that's when they said, well, that's it. We're not going to take this anymore because. Here's a person calling himself God, and we're going to crucify him. We're going to prove he's not God because he's not going to come back. We're going to kill him. If he's, if he's God, he'll come back, he'll, or he'll strike us dead because God, they understand, is a wrathful God. And then, of course, you try to you try to kill God, and he's going to kill you. Well, that's their particular perspective of it. And so this view was there up until about 1800. By the 1800s, it started to wane. And uh, by uh, basically 1900, you have the ear of the so-called modernist. These are the modernist humanists. This is where Lionel picks up from. Uh, this is where he get all his, his cues from. This is Darwin. This is uh, social structure, so, social engineering with a fundamental order. When this all collapses, and this collapses in 1945 because the science collapses, and what you're seeing now is simply a rehash of everything that failed before. They're trying it again and again and again, and they continuously fail. They can't predict anything. They, they couldn't predict you know, climate change. They couldn't predict uh, uh, with the whole thing with, with, with CVD. They didn't predict it. They're, they're, they're completely off. And what you're seeing now in the newspaper is nothing more than fear-mongering. And the thing is, they knew this was going on. So what happens is that you have people now on the right side saying, hey, this is genetics. We're doing genetic. It's our turn now. We're going to socially engineer society. Of course, the ones who are Gnostic, who believe in a sense of chaos, that, that, that progress comes out of chaos, they want the conflict. Because they understand that from their perspective, the progress, the progressives, comes out of the conflict. So without the conflict, you don't have progress. And so what happens, you have these systems sitting back and forth. But then again, you have to understand who the social engineers are. And there is anyone with a group, and it, there are a lot of scientists who want to be the top priests. They want to be the, the top advisor to the government or, or, or whatever governments, governments are around. They're part of the vassal state. And, of course, that vassal state depends on who is heading the government and then who's behind the government, who's behind your president, who's behind your, your premier or, or whoever's heading up the government. And there is, a, there is a priestly class advising these people. So what happens is the, the, the shadow government, the elites, are not one single thing. There is a group of them. And they don't need, they don't need something ordered. They only need chaos. And this is what I've been reading again. A, a journal, uh, a, a general came out from uh, the English Army saying that is very dangerous now because what the, what the United States is doing by putting troops into Ukraine is creating a situation where they can have an accidental war. And of course, that accidental war is going to be nuclear. And this is it's been long on the table that the way to cure society, and this is again by the people who believe in IP, IPCC. That religion, the environmental religion, has no qualms about using nuclear weapons to to, to heal the earth. They're going to save the earth with nuclear weapons. So when COVID fails, here comes your nuclear war. This is the reality. And the thing is, unfortunately, for those who are in ADOS, you need to understand you could never trust your government. It's never been there. And at the same time, they're not there for you. This is where my choice, I'm anti-establishment, but I'm not violent. So I understand the violence that you see with BLM and Antifa simply creates the cause, it creates the narrative for the police state. Same thing, the, the fight with race. It's not about race, it's about class. People who are involved in racism believe the racism because they've been told this. This is something that they've been taught. This is a narrative, again, another narrative. But the whole point of the narratives initially was not to, to sort of create racism. It was there to create conflict. Conflict is the key. As long as you're in conflict, particularly violent conflict, you're in, pro you're, you're, you're in trouble. We need to back off on global violence. We need to back on, on, off of global hate. Ironically enough, people are saying, because everyone's going around, everyone's fans of, and they're bringing up these sort of called these Gnostic symbols 
you know, the, the Illuminati and this and that. They always bring up Alistair Crowley. Well, you see, that's from Alistair Crowley. He says, do what thou wilt. Say, yeah, they say that's demonic. Well, no, it's not demonic. Do what thou wilt or it's not demonic. What is it? It's the God given, it's, it's our God given free will. We have free will. We can do what we want. We have to understand that, okay, we're going to do what we want, but there's also consequences to what we do. If you want good consequences, you need to do good things. If you want bad consequences, you need to make bad choices. The choices we make determines the type of consequence that we have. And understand that at the same time is that we're not here permanently. There is, for those who believe in, the, in, in, in a higher creation and a higher order, there is an afterlife. So we're here essentially to create our stage for the next life. Where are you going to go in the next life? This is what Gnosis is about. And it's, it's an innocent totality. Gnosis is about, it's about the path of where you're going after you die. You set your path here on earth for what's going to happen afterwards. If you're in a spiritual path, on a spiritual path, your goal should be to be spiritual and to be spiritual afterwards. However, if you're on a physical path, which is temporary, you're going to expect that at the end of your life, you will not have a spiritual life afterwards. You will not have a second life. You're forfeiting your second life for the first one. And this is why they often say it's better uh, to let the body die so that your soul can live. It's not that your body is worthless. It's what happens. And you, you know, this is a choice. You choose your body or your, or, or, and I've seen this. It's an unfortunate. You see people who are in situations where the people are very, not only really abusive in terms of physical, physically abusive, but they do a lot of bad things. They're not necessarily nice people in terms of their sense of, of aggression, in terms of success, status, and so on and so forth. So simply on a status issue, they see people who are in churches, these priests and so on and so forth, going for status. And this destroys them, destroys their faith. And so, well, yes, the body, they, they've been healed, they've been saved. They're, they have these mir uh, 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 medical mir miracles that gives them extra life if they have a life-threatening disorder. But they save the body, but now the soul is dying. The soul is in a critical state. In the United States, the West is at a very critical point because there, the Western soul is dead. There is no Western soul. This is why they're amoral. They don't have morality because there's no soul there. Without a soul, you do not have morality. And without that morality, you have no reason for morality. You have no reason for anything. Everything is simply an illusion. Everything is a concept. So do whatever you want to do. Postmodernism. This is what we have today. Anyways, uh, we're at the end here now. We're going to go into our last bit which is the transition vlog, because this is both the uh, observation vlog and the Gnosis vlog. So we're going into the trans, uh, transition section of the uh, notes vlog, which is our life as Cyborg Elf. We're going to go and do that next. We are Cyborg Alpha, infinite tween in middle school for life.